The all-new Seat Arona, the new small SUV, everything today about this vehicle and how to fuel your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with me, with Thomas. So we're going to take a deep look on the exterior and the interior. This is the world premiere here, so no driving today, but everything you need to know also about the engines, it will be very exciting, I can promise you. Let's go with this full review from the world premiere in full HD, full screen and full links. Let's go! The Seat Arona is based on the MQB A0 platform, that is the same platform that the Seat Ibiza is using. So also the front is, you know, you see a lot of resemblance, but of course you have the stronger SUV elements, for example here also with an off-road bumper style. This one is the FR version, the sporty version, also among the top versions, the most expensive ones. And you can also see that as from the Seat Leono or Seat Ibiza, those daytime running lights in the famous LED signature, very spectacular, and they will also be used for the turning indicators when they are activated, for example. What do you think about the front here with the design? I want to hear your opinions. Definitely strong, but not too strong. I think a very dynamic design by Seat again, which will appeal to a lot of different customers. Now the side profile, 4 meters 14 or 13 foot 6 is the total length of the Seat Arona. That means almost 10 centimeters difference to the Seat Ibiza, so about 8 centimeters longer, just about that. And about 23 centimeters shorter than the Seat Ateca. The Seat Ateca is not on the very same platform, still on the MQB, a little different derivative. So this one the smaller brother of the Seat Ateca. However, you can also get big rims, for example, 18-inch sporty rims here in the FR trim in a two-color scheme. Pretty sporty, definitely. And you can see the crossover look by those plastic fenders right there over the wheel arches and also in the lower bumper area. Then a special design element. It's not only the contrasting side mirror caps here. You can see you can get a contrasting roof as well in either in black, as it is right here, or in grey. We will also soon show you different colours. Or in orange, or then the last option would be that you take the very same vehicle colour as in the lower part. And, well, it is an interesting styling element. You see that the design line raises up right there. Also, we see the split design above the door handles, which doesn't go all the way to the back, but it's caught here, right there again. And then this flying roof design element, you know, stressing this very special style of the vehicle. But I think if you pick a contrast roof, the vehicle appears higher. If you want to appear a little bit lower, then you should go for the very same vehicle color, which is again, as I said, also possible. And to the rear, well, it looks a little bit like the Leon or Ibiza from the rear, and this resemblance due to the brand throughout the through brand is also um, actually intentional. LED taillights from technology, also very well done with the signature taillight here. I like it, FR version again, features here. For example, this two-color bumper with aluminum style. It's plastic though, and I mean, why not, to keep the weight down. Also more torsional stiffness with this platform here now, 25% stiffer. Then, um, you know, the predecessor version of the Ibiza, for example, you can transport on that one. And then, well, those ones here again, fake exhaust pipes, and we've talked about them quite a lot of times. Why do manufacturers use them? Well, they do it because different engines would have different exhausts, for example, a diesel and a petrol engine. But when you put the fake exhaust pipes, you can make every vehicle, no matter which engine there is, appearing the same styling way on the outside. Like it or like it not. And we will soon also talk about the very engines. By the way, this one here is built really in uh, in Spain, in the Mato Rail plant. 
alongside the Audi Q2. So this one would be another sibling of the Seat Arona. So here we have some other colors. I will close the doors for you. This one here in the orange color, first of all in the exterior. And also interesting here we got the gray contrasting roof. You remember black, gray, orange or same vehicle color for the roof. So what do you think? You know, we know the Samoa orange also from the Seat Ateca. Here also applied to the Seat Arona, to the smaller brother. And again, this silver contrast which is separating the roof and the rest of the body. For sure, this vehicle here does not look that dynamic as, for example, the Seat Ibiza, which is also lower, for example. But I mean, it is an SUV or a crossover. It doesn't have to look that dynamic. I think the Seat Ateca is a um, little bit more more um, harmonic from the proportions, proportions for example. But I'm not sure if it's maybe even the contrasting roof again. So I'm really anxious to see that at some point with the same color in the roof there. So what about this very white car? You see there are also, well, we'll see in Zoom, white applications on the interior. So it's possible on the, old, on the exterior. Here with a great contrasting roof. And I think this bright is a rather matte and bright white. So I really like white cars as long as they are clean, for sure. And probably the most extraordinary color of the evening. We've already seen it with the Seat Ibiza here. I'm not even sure how to describe this color. It's more like a skin tone, for example. I mean, it definitely attracts attention, even though it's not my personal favorite one. But if you take the roof also in consideration, there are so many different combinations you can go for, and that means probably not so many Seat Arona will be the very same, both exterior and interior. So this one here is the very interesting part now. Let me just fix that. So here we go. The engine part, there we will, first of all, three different kinds of engine available. Petrol, diesel and CNG. This one here, the TSI, either available with one liter of displacement with a three-cylinder, 95 horsepower or 115 horsepower, the bigger one also able to combine it with the DSG, or the diesel, 1.6 liter diesel, also with 95 or 115 horsepower, the smaller one also able to combine it with the DSG, otherwise manual. Then there will be a 1.5 liter TSI, the petrol, a strong petrol with in the new one, four cylinder with cylinder on demand technology. That one will be a strong one, 150 horsepower. And my favorite will be the CNG engine, so called TGI, one liter TSI with 90 horsepower. And with the TGI, then you can combine riding a city SUV with as much sustainability as possible at the moment because from well to wheel. CNG cars are more sustainable than electric cars at this very moment if you take the whole production process into account. And CNG is growing basically, more and more fuel stations are arriving and the thing is only CO2 comes out of the exhaust, hardly any fine dust or NOx particles, so CNG burns very cleanly. And therefore, especially with this vehicle, it's a very interesting part. Also the Ibiza comes with a new CNG engine, so if you're looking for the most sustainable version, this could be a good choice also for the long-term one, because it keeps the total cost of ownership down the more you drive. And now to the interior. First of all, door closing sound. Pretty solid and also very crafty door handles, I like that. You will sit 5 centimeters higher than in a Seat Ibiza, so that might be an argument also for people who want to get in and out of the car easier. Quality-wise, you see an inside of the doors, this one here is hard plastic. So this is maybe a minus for the interior. But then again here, those door handles here, pretty solid again. Automatic levers for the windows and then we have a leather red cover here and also a cloth inside of the doors. That one here is surely a plus again. And also a lot of space for water bottles, for bigger ones even. Then the rest of the interior, here again hard plastic, this is a minus, but then a nice leather red cover with red contrast stitches for the FR version, that's good. And wow, lovely seats, all fabric, talking about sustainability, that's good. And a sporty style, definitely with more shoulder support, here again for the sporty FR trim, with a, you know, also a little bit of racing style. So very interesting and you can already see they offer you a lot of space so it doesn't look like it would be a really a small car. 
and I'm really anxious to get inside there to test it, how it really feels, because I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. So um, I'm not, first of all, in, you know, the typical customer for a small car segment. And I mean, this is based on a small car, but then again, from the interior, what I'm experiencing here at the very first moment, to pump it down first manually, well, it was all the way up the seat. So, because I need it all the way down, steering wheel can be adjusted. Oh, that's a very smooth mechanism, look at that. For example, wow. So, that really feels good. FR steering wheel also has a flat bottom. Then the backrest or back part can be adjusted like this. And yeah, you definitely sit higher than in the Ibiza, just like here. It's a good overview to all sides. The windows are relatively steep. The dashboard is also not coming towards you too much, actually, so I like that. So it's definitely a comfortable seating position. One of the uh, most important features of this very vehicle that you say, I don't need so much space around me. I don't need a big car, but I still want a lot of comfort inside the city, for example. Then, you know, if you're a little bit smaller, you can put, put the seat up a little bit. Headroom-wise, plenty of headroom left, so that is no problem at all. And it's really a spacious feeling, so that might be really something where you say, I step a class down in size, but still have everything I need. That's what wise you can see, very interesting, is that this line here, this gap, goes all the way across the dashboard. I'm not sure what I have to think about that. Um, maybe it would have looked cleaner if it wasn't the case. Here, by the way, with the Beats audio system with 300 watt, that is optionally available. In the cockpit over you, you can see this very clean design, not too many design lines, and I like a string and clean design. Here, for example, just with one design line, then again, a high class leather red cover that gives you, you know, almost a premium feeling in this vehicle. You can get a smaller GPS for lower price. This one here is the optional 8-inch screen. So we got it well integrated, also with a lot of screen left. But you still have knobs right there, for example, for volume. Or here it will also be possible to zoom in and out of the map, for example. Soon a uh, little bit more deals to that. Then if you look lower, this is the area for the climate control. Still manually controllable. I also like it. I still, you know, maybe a little bit old school there, but I like to have a knob for the temperature and that goes just faster. Two USB ports in the lower part. This one here with a six-speed manual. As I said, depending on the version, the horsepower version you take, you can also get a dual clutch transmission. This is interesting here in the lower part, by the way, the start engine stop button inspired by Jaguar, who did that first with the XF. Um, you know, with this heartbeat function to keep the car, uh, to, to make it come alive. So here it is with this heart beating function. So nice emotional element. Well, it wasn't their original idea, but I mean, why not taking it over? So and right there, you can also have those shortcuts. For example, if you go to the radio, or here for media, putting your smartphone in. Uh, well, USB connection is possible, but also just a Bluetooth connection. So both is possible, the smartphone mirroring functions, or also with the Bluetooth, whatever you want. This one here, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Mirror Link in the high spec. This one here, two vehicle functions, if you also want to look at eco mode and stuff. So, and seems like that the GPS is not available right there, but that would probably be the, the position where the GPS then would be possible. So here you see this would be the home screen and then you can also pick it just by touch everything. Passenger seats, same design, very attractive. Then there's an inductive charging point in the front if you want so, option. And if we go lower here, classic handbrake, very important to me if I do some rally racing runs, <laughs> you know. Then two cup holders, the one is smaller, the other one is bigger, but they are not really adaptive. Then there's a 12 power supply and some more space, and then fixed armrests, so overall, I mean, there are some hard plastic functions to save money, but the processing quality, how everything is like fixed and so, is again very high. So overall, I mean, I would have liked if they used some soft um, material on the dashboard, but the rest is really very well processed. And now let's check the rear compartment. 
also fairly easy entry. Well, if I would be driving as a tall driver, you see, oh, I still fit right there. Have some, just some space in front of my knees. Also relatively upright seating position and, you know, this really, I mean, it's not a long car, so fairly good result. Headroom-wise, there's no panoramic roof in this ferry vehicle. Still have a lot of headroom left. So this is also a good solution to drive with a small vehicle inside the city, but still no problem to drive with four tall adults. There's no middle armrest right there, but there is a third seat in the rear. By the way, you can also see the same design is carried out over to the rear, also with those red seat belts. <laughs> you know, maybe remember when you go for that in a Mercedes AMG, you sometimes have to pay a couple of thousand for such an extra package to get the red stripes uh, along the seatbelt. But here, <laughs> no problem actually. What is uh, remarkable that we don't have any bags at the at the side here, at the, um, the rear part of the seats. But then again, maybe it also gives you some more knee room on the other hand. So, what about the trunk? It's a manual one here, but totally fine for me. Everything you see is very easily done. It's not, you know, not too pretentious. Not pretentious at all, this vehicle. And then, trunk space, about 400 liters. And you see they have really used the space they have available. You can maybe uh, give you some more light here. You can see it better. So I think it's, uh, it's a very good concept here that you can use everything you have of this rather small car. Let's see what's beneath there. You can have a full replacement tire right there. That might also be, you know, important for someone with riding a lot of gravel roads and stuff. And you can flip the seats. Well, you usually do it from the um, rear compartment, but you can also, when you reach over here, for example, there's a one-third, two-sort split. Here we go. And yeah, that's that's really reasonable. What do you think about it? So this is maybe one of the strengths this car has. And again, yeah, they use some simple materials, but for the materials it used and how the transitions and the gaps are being designed, you see that the engineering part really did their homework. And let's take a look at other interior trims. This one is the Excellence trim level. So also a high trim level, but a little bit different than the FR. Not so much trimmed on sportiness, but more on elegance. For example, here you also got those special seats here with Alcantara on the inside and leatherette on the outside. Also a perfect combination. And leather trims on the dashboards, for example. And then you can get white contour stitches for this one and also some more white elements. For example, also if you could take a look at here. So bright style. I mean, this really refreshes the interior. And, you know, interiors will be more about customization, no doubt. Um, if you wear suits, by the way, the Alcantara is a little bit stickier than the fabric. Um, at the other hand, you know, it's also cozier a little bit more. It depends on, and if you're more in the racing style, um, you know, you don't get shaken so much around. So, I would actually put the Alcantara on the FR and the fabric on the Excellence. That would have been, you know, a better fit, I think. But both choices are definitely uh, worthwhile. So I really like that. I think good job also from design-wise. And here also you have some more shoulder support. So which one would you prefer, the FR or the Excellence? And yet another seat. This one is the pure fabric seat. So all in fabric, but still a lot of contrast here. For example, with white contrast stitches. And I would suppose that this very surface material as it is a little bit, let's call it perforated, would be the best climate comfort in summertime. So I think that of the three seats shown so far, this one will stay coolest in summer. All three options, I think, are very attractive. And again, about individualization here, you can not only get the leather red cover for the dashboard, you can also get very clean, almost cool, icy looking dashboards here and I think it's a better solution than this uh, shiny black covers we see in so many vehicles today where you get a lot of scratches and fingerprints. This one here is a matte white cover and I think this adds really a lot to the vehicle. What do you think?
And now to our conclusion for today is Seat Arona. This very segment has been surging the past years and will probably continue on this way. People want the higher seating position, but a lot of people don't want the biggest SUVs, especially for the cities, you know, where they don't need such huge exterior dimensions, but still want a lot of space on the interior. And that is definitely something that the Arona is guaranteeing. A sharp dynamic design on the exterior, very modern look, the interior very well processed, everything, all the gaps fit together, modern infotainment, very attractive seat combinations, so there are hardly any flaws you can find about this car. Some minor ones are pointed out, as we do with every vehicle, but I think the main point is that you got a lot of space for the exterior dimensions on the inside and everything looks, you know, pretty clean and almost flawless. And the riding will exactly be well, pretty much the same than with the Seat Ibiza because the same platform, same stiffness, and so we can have both SUV and possibly a sporty driving style. And of course, we will find out more about that when we drive this very vehicle. I hope you enjoyed our first impressions here. Well, it's more than impressions of always an autofuel, of course. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed our episode here on the world premiere with Seat Arona. Give us your feedback, what you think about this vehicle and which trims you would go for. Thank you so much for watching, guys.